Hello, everyone. I hope everybody's doing well. I think we're live. Awesome sauce, awesome sauce. How is everyone tonight? I hope you're all doing well. Just waiting for some more people to join us. Hi, Aurora. How are you, dear? I hope you had a great day. Hi, Angie. Hi, Shannon. Oh, thank you, honey. I got it all chopped off the other day, and I love it. I do. It's nice. It's it's fun. I went with sassy. Did everyone have a good day? Good. I'm glad to hear that, Aurora. While you're all here, if you can like and subscribe and share and do all the YouTube things. Thank you, Aurora. I kind of like it, too. I do. I like the, the sassiness of it because I can do a lot of different things. But I was out on the deck all day. Whew. Lifting, you know, really big 50-pound bags of dirt and sphagnum moss and diamestaceous earth and all this other stuff. And uh, putting it in a wheelbarrow and wheelbarrow and uh, mixing it together and repotted a bunch of plants. My sister-in-law, God love her. Um, her name is Susie. She is, in the family, she's referred to as Jean Susie. I'm referred to as... Kevin Susie, um, she gave me, I was going to take pictures and I forgot, but she gave me the most beautiful uh, hibiscus plant. I mean, this thing is massive. And then she gave me, um, I've always called them snake plants. She calls them mother-in-law tongues. Um, great big one. So I had to uh, repot that. I didn't have to repot the hibiscus. Thank you, sweet baby Jesus. But I had lots of other things out on the deck that I had to repot today. So I just I had sweat running down the crackety arts into my eyeballs, into my ears, into my nose. It was awful. Hi, Michaela. Hi, Angie. Um, so I took a shower and I laid down and I fell asleep and took a two and a half hour nap. Sorry, but I was friggin' exhausted. And when I woke up, it's like, oh, my arms. So thank God for ibuprofen. That's all I've got to say. Um, yeah, that's what I thought, Michaela. Um, I just never heard it called that before. So anyway, so I have um, the hibiscus in the living room. I've got the snake plant in the living room, one of. And then I ran out of dirt and my husband's like, he bought me this great big bag of dirt. Um, not potting soil and not topsoil. But anyway, I'm learning this year that there's all sorts of different kinds of dirt. I, never, I just thought dirt was dirt. But apparently well, that was wrong of me to think that. So um, anyway, I'm just learning a lot about planting and different things. Um <clears throat> about plants and the hibiscus is even though it's tropical it still likes partial shade and the snake plant it likes shade it just thrives in in shade so that's nice so that's in the living room so it should all work out well so did everybody have a good day i did it was nice to not write today i didn't write one single solitary word and sometimes that's okay it's okay to take a day where you don't write. I thought about writing, you know, different plots in my head and stuff while I was uh, repotting plants and, and stuff. Um, so, but tomorrow we'll be back at it because um, Kevin has to go help his mother tomorrow. So he's not going to be able to get me any dirt for a few days. So I have a feeling this weekend I will be working on plants. Always doing edits. Michaela J, do you edit more than anybody I know? <laughs> 
And that's that's good though. That means you're writing. When you're doing edits, it means you're writing. Unless you're an editor. And then that just means you're working. So that's okay. No matter how you want to slice it, it's all good. It's all very, very good. So tonight, so I forgot to schedule this. I always schedule the Thursday before. And um, I forgot to do that this week. So I was at, I was talking to Shannon, my producer, Shannon Nemechek, God love her. This morning, I'm like, oh, crap, I forgot to schedule it. What should we talk about tonight? So she was she was throwing out ideas. And then she said, organization. And I'm like, have we met? I turned out organized shit. I am, I'm, I, it may be organized chaos. That's a thing, right? Um, so, yeah, I told her I didn't know what tips I could give other than I do organize my clothes. I roll everything, the Marie Kondo, what Marie Kondo did. I did that a couple of years ago during COVID and I fell in love with it. I still do it. That's one thing I've kept up with. Um, anyway, organization is out. We'll have to invite somebody else in who's Linda Ray Sandy. She is one of the most organized people that I've ever met in my entire life. So I'm going to ask her if she'll come on some night and talk about how she organizes everything on her computer. And it's just really fascinating. It just really is. I think I'm just um, glutton for punishment. <laughs> search, search, search. Uh, Oh, Michaela does both. She edits hers and for others. That's cool. Ashley said she wrote 1K, but feel like I could have done more. I'll continue later, but I feel like I'm in the muddled middle right now. You know what, Ashley? Every single word counts. Did you know that? Every single word counts. I don't care if you wrote 100 words today, 1,000 words today, 10,000 words today. Every single word counts. It's just one step closer to the end, right? So don't ever feel bad that you only wrote a thousand words or that you only wrote 500 words or that you only wrote 25. It doesn't matter. Do not, do not beat yourself up over that. Okay. I give you permission, permission, permission. I give you permission to have a low word, low word count day. Everybody goes through it and it's fine. And the middle is always, um, here. I found that, um, the middle of the book, I was always like, oh, I just want to hurry up and get to the end. So there's this book. I think I lent it out to somebody called um, basically how to write your book from the middle. So you start with the middle, right? Which is, we think probably the least exciting part of your book is the middle, but it's not. It's one of the most exciting parts of your book, right? Because up until that point, you've just given, been giving, you know, introducing all your characters to your readers and, and loping along like it should, you know, you can start with action, whatever we've talked about it. But when you get to that middle, that's when things start to, that's when you're kneading the bread. The beginning of the book is your, your butter and your eggs and your flour and all that. And then now in the middle, you're kneading it, getting ready to put it into the oven. So, um, yep. Yeah, roll the shirts into the size of a dollar. Well, I don't get them that small. <laughs> I have big shirts. Um, Angela Archer. Hi, honey. She says she's traveling cross country, driving home to Oklahoma from my parents' house in Nevada. So I have a big old goose egg. It's fine though. What's a goose egg? Oh, you, a goose egg. See where I'm from. A goose egg means you got a knot in the head. Do you mean a gooseneck trailer? And what part of Oklahoma? Because I spent some time a long, long time ago in Skytook, Oklahoma. And I tell you what, that was probably the most beautiful country side I'd ever seen in my entire life. I loved Skytook. So you're welcome, Ashley. Yes, your first book, you wrote the middle scene. Good for you, Michaela. So anyway, so um, we decided... Oh, a big old goose egg zero. Oh, that's right. That's right. Goose egg is also zero. Why was I thinking about a goose egg on the noggin? Like a big old knot. I'm sorry. That's been that two and a half hour nap I took today. Yes, I get it. <laughs> okay. Cool beans. Well, okay. So tonight we're going to talk. Oh, thank you, Lane. I appreciate that. 
I do. Um, I just got it cut yesterday and, uh, I just, I love it. But anyway, we're talking about plotters versus pantsers. Okay. Or pantsters. Is it pantsters? 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 Those who plot and those who don't. <laughs> and you know what? It's okay to be both. It, it's okay to be either one of those things. There is no, well, there is a right way to, and a wrong way to do just about everything. But as far as your writing process, it's okay to just pants your way through an entire book. Okay. Nothing at all wrong with that. Right. That's okay. Um, and I used to be that kind of writer. I didn't, I couldn't have plotted to save my soul from the devil. I didn't know how to plot. Um, didn't know how to outline, uh, I didn't know how to do any of those things that I know now are kind of important to a book, but it's still okay. I, there are times when I pants a book, just pants the hell out of it, but I still, in, I still have a basic outline of how I want to get from point A to point Z, right? From A to Z, how I want to get there. Um, I know some people, uh, and Perry, she calls it plotting, but what she's doing is actually writing out the entire novel by hand, the plotting. And then she goes back and she fixes it and adds things, whatever, but she's basically writing the entire. Um, I know authors who plot every single paragraph of every single chapter. And it's like, why just write the damn book? Okay. So that, you know, everything in moderation, right? Everything in, in, in moderation. So I do plot now. I love plotting out my books, but I still know that there will be times when I have to just pants the hell out of it because the plot, even though, you know, that old expression, oh, it looked good on paper. Well, that plot might've looked spectacular on paper, but when you sit down to actually write the actual stories, sometimes that plot it's just, it's not, it's not what it needs to be, but you can still keep the bones of it, right? And do the writing part, just pants the hell out of a writing part. So that's basically what I do. I plot the book. I don't plot extensively unless um, I'm using real people in real life, like I did for uh, The Edge of Forever. That I plotted the hell out of. Um, I do have my board of insanity that I use and that's the white bird with all the sticky notes and I keep that well until I move my right into the window that's so pretty um I can still put it on the wall next to my desk and that just the the really important plot points that I want to make sure get into that book um because as you're writing along, you might forget about that really important plot point that you just really knew in your heart needed to go in the book. So that's another reason for plotting the way I plot the board of insanity, just again, the poster board and the sticky notes, but it's with plot points and it's with, um, it, like, uh, I have a, I use pink for my heroines. Don't come at me. Okay. It's what I had. It's what I got used to. So I use blue for my heroes. And, you know, even though I've already written down what they're afraid of and, and um, what they want, what their goals are and stuff, I still like to have those post-it post notes up there um, to remind, right? So that I can just do a quick glance, okay? And that's what I use my board of insanity for, okay? Um, I do, I do both. I plot, I know where I know what I'm, what this book is about, where I want it to go, what I want to have happen along the way. I've all got that up here, right? And um, so I plot it out. And it's only my plots. When I plot, it's only, sometimes it's only a page long, right? Print that puppy off and stick it over your computer that you write at. To remind you, okay, this is where, this is what I thought I wanted this book to be. And then I pants the rest of it. I don't plot out every, every sentence of every paragraph of every chapter. Um, 
McKenna says she used to never plot. I let the story tell me what to write. Novels I write, the more I catch myself plotting. And that's fine. Okay. Another thing about plotting and about doing these really deep dives into your, your characters. We've talked about that in past weeks. Um, when you go, if you write in series novels, like I do, you go to write the next book and you can't remember something about that secondary character from that previous novel. It's right there. Okay. It's right there. It, just, you know, get your mouse out and click, right? Just go to that book. You've got that. It's like you're keeping your book Bible as you write. At least that's how I think about it. That's what I think about it. But there's nothing wrong with plotting and there's nothing wrong with pantsing. Um, oh, is that the book, How to Write Your Book from the Middle, Shannon? Is that what that is, that link? Mm. We have weather coming in, maybe. Anyway, so um, plot and pants. I think you can do both. And I really honestly think that's how the vast majority of writers do it. You say you're not, oh, I don't plot anything. Well, you kind of sort of do. You kind of, I mean, at least, okay. This is something I've just learned within the last two years, okay? Some people do not have that internal voice in their head. They don't hear themselves they don't hear words. It's mostly feelings or images. So when, so when they think they're not thinking in terms of words and I didn't, I didn't know such a thing existed. So growing, you know, I was raising my daughter. It's like, Oh my God, stop and think. What or what were you thinking of? She's like, I wasn't. And I never understood until two years ago. That's because she doesn't have that internal voice in her head. I had never heard of such a thing, but it's real. Anyway, um, Angie said, I think my word plotting might be leading me to a title for my book. I didn't see it before I wrote it down on the whiteboard. There you go. There you go. Angie says, Angela Archer says, my outlines could be novellas. I love, I have to do them though. Kudos to both plotters and pantsers for finding what works for them. Exactly. Exactly. You have to find what works best for you. Um, but don't be afraid to plot something. Don't be afraid to do a brief outline. Don't be afraid to be a little bit organized when it comes to your writing. Okay. Don't be afraid to be organized. Okay. So that when you go to write the next book, you've got the information from the, you know, when you write series like I do, you've got that information from the previous novel and it just helps. Yes, Carolyn, that's why she's such an awesome, incredible proofreader, right? So she will read a book. Okay. When I'm reading a book, I can hear the voices and the accents in my head when I'm reading, you know, I can, I can hear all of it, I can hear all, I hear the words in my head just as if someone was talking to me. Emily does not have that. And there are literally hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people on this planet who are like, just like Emily. But that's also what makes them really good at languages. I don't know what the correlation is, but apparently. Yeah, the words don't mess her up. Exactly. And yes, Emily, my daughter, is a final prover and she is awesome. And Aurora, that's, yeah, constant, constant voices in the head. There are times when I wish I could just shut, shut them off for just like five minutes of peace. Yeah, Michaela, you're right. I used to think the same thing, that plotting made your books boring. Well, if I wrote this plot, I have to stick to it. No, you don't. No, you don't. Just because you wrote the plot doesn't mean you have to stick to it verbatim, line by line, period by period. All plotting is doing is helping you stay organized when you write. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's nice to be in a space where you can safely say, I hear voices in my head. Hi, Bobby. 
Yeah, I'm pretty, Bobby says, I'm fairly sure the MMPI has something to say about the voices in your, in our head. <laughs> That's probably, probably. But anyway, plotting, pantsing, you could do both. Um, you don't, you can just do a brief, you, okay. One of my favorite things before I got my new rocket book is to have these little journals, right? It's just, all I'm doing is buying a journal. That's it. Just a little journal, right? And I like this size because it'll fit into my purse. Okay. And it's a hell of a lot lighter than my, uh, taking my laptop or my iPad anywhere. But, and I always have a pen in my purse. But if I'm, when I'm out with Kevin and uh, he's driving, uh, I will write notes down about the current work in progress. What I, you know, if I, if I hear, if I see or hear an important scene in my head, I will write it down. And then when I get home, I can add it to my notes on my computer. Yeah, we are the writers, the only adults who get to have um, imaginary friends. That's right. I have lots of, of imaginary friends. But I love these little journals. And I love to sit on my sofa away from the computer. And for me, it just it just works better for me personally to write it out. Um, I think I will still use this just for nostalgic reasons. I'll still use these, but that rocket notebook, I'm telling you what, I love it. A book for the car. Yeah. It goes in my purse. Oh, that's all. Thank you, Bobby. Bobby says, thank you, Susan, for gathering us together. So we feel that sense of belonging to like peeps. Exactly. We're all in this stuff together, right? And uh, I just, you know, I just want to help other authors. Okay. But yeah, um, each, each novel, I get a new journal for each novel. Um, and then I love these little, this is actually in a planner that I quit using, but I love these little post-it flags, right? They're just these little, well, like this, okay? And they come, the ends you can get in different colors and designs and et cetera, et cetera. And I will have like, um, uh, I use the same process in my journals that I do on my board of insanity. And I will keep my little flags and get these right. Because these are the same colors that I'm using on my board of insanity. Okay. So, uh, red for the heroine, blue for the hero and orange for for, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's for orange. Just trust me. It's orange. Um, orange for me on my board of insanity is always, always, always important plot points. Okay. And I will keep this one of these in the back of the journal. It has a little pocket back here and I can slip one of those in there. So that if I'm outside, if I'm away from home, um, at the doctor's office, I can just write and write and write. And then I have my little flags that I can put in there. So I know this is important or this is about the hero or the heroine or the secondary character, or whatever. That's how, and I call this plotting. Okay. Um, when you know who your characters are, that's plotting. Um, I love the rocket book. I have been using it. Okay. Um, and I love that it's reusable. <clears throat> and then I will be able to get rid of my 10,000 spiral bound notebooks and, and digitize them. I do love that because there is just something about 
writing it out that just helps me, especially if I'm to a point where I'm stuck on something or I'm just mm, kind of in a, you know, in that funk. When I start writing things out by hand, I feel better and it just kicks it in. So it's okay to plot and it's okay to pants. And I think we can do both. And that's how I do it. Do you all have some questions? Any questions? I love having the little sticky notes above where I'm writing at or next to where I'm writing at. So I can just glance and say, oh yeah, that's what I wanted to put in this novel. That is a key plot point, And that's always in orange. And I don't know why I decided those colors. I think it's because that's what I had. <laughs> and I just stuck with it. Oh, Aurora got her, her rocket book yesterday. Love it. I also got the other books discussed last week. Oh, these? I got mine too. Can you read that? Is it backwards? So this is Body Beats to Build On. I haven't looked at this one. And this is Naughty Words for Nice Writers. I started going through this one, and it was really good. Um, I don't know. Yeah, hang on. Don't make fun of my big butt now, people. <laughs> okay. Let me get out an old one. Okay. All right. This is from Black Richard's Heart. Okay. And I like to handwrite important plot points or dates, who's who the king is, that type of thing. Um, pink for my heroine, purple for secondary female characters, dark blue for my hero, um, light blue for my secondary male. And it's just how I do it. And I'm old. I'm 57. Do not come after me and call me, you know, sexist or whatever. Um, and then I think, yeah, orange for plot points. And these are just key, um, just little notes to myself of something I might have thought about the night before. And I was just grabbing whatever color I had and using that. So that's my board of insanity. And sometimes you can have two or three of these things going and that's okay. And you don't have to do it. I just, um, Oh, <laughs> oh, Michaela says sticky notes for my thing too. Until my husband bought me a new desktop PC that has a touch screen. LOL. The first time I first one I stuck to the top of the screen, changed the size of the dock and I freaked. <laughs> it was something I would do. It was definitely something I would do. Um, touch screen. Yeah. Yes. The sticky notes out for your desktop. I just discovered that not too long ago too. Um, they're just, it doesn't click with my brain and that's okay. It works for a lot of people. Um, Bobby swears by OneNote. She loves OneNote because Bobby's an organized individual. Bobby's really good with Excel spreadsheets. Anybody who can figure out Excel like she has, um, just wired a bit differently than I am. So I'm just, I'm, I'm just really visual and, and, uh, I, there's just something that's right. I use um, used to use these uh, legal pads, right? And man, I would have little flags going through through this whole thing. And it's like, but it was too big. It was too big, and it's okay to figure out what works for you. So that's why I say never invest a huge amount of money. Get one or two legal pads. And see if that's going to work for you. If it doesn't, you're only out a couple bucks. Go to Dollar General and get these little binders or these little uh, journals. Just go to Dollar General and get a journal. That's all it is. And uh, the little flags or however you want to do it. Um, I know some people who like to have different colored ink for each thing. And that's something else that you could do when you plot. You could use whatever you want to use for your protagonist, your antagonist, your plot points, um, love interest, whatever. Okay. You can do that in one of these. Okay. You can do that in this, 
in your rocket book and then just take pictures and then send it to the cloud and it's all there. Everyone behave until I get back. <laughs> no promises. So what questions do you have? We got, we got 30 minutes left. I'll, I'll answer anything. It takes a minute for the, for the questions to come in, in the chat. There's just a tiny little bit of a delay and that's okay. So, oh yeah, I brought a snake plant in here. Nope, it's on that side. I love snake plants. That's a plant that I can't kill unless I, you know, run it through a wood chipper. So anyway, um, there are all different ways to plot. There are all different ways to pants. Um, there are all different ways of writing. Um, Liliana Hart, my friend Liliana, she's what we call a water writer. She will get in the bathtub or the hot tub or whatever and with her laptop and just write and write and write. I can't do that. I'm too fidgety. I'm what I, I refer to myself as a fidgety writer. Write for 30 minutes and then I got to get up and walk around for, you know, five, 10 minutes and then sit back down. Or, you know, get up and go pee, make another pot of coffee, grab another cup of coffee, check the weather, whatever. That's how I do it. And everybody does it differently. And that's the whole point of tonight. It's okay to do things differently. If you have found something that works for you, then continue to use it. It's perfectly acceptable. It's fine. Okay. I hear, I see things not so much anymore because I've been off social media a lot because it just pisses me off. Social media does. It just, it just does anymore. Um, so for soul's sake, I just backed away a little bit. That's why I'm doing these little YouTube videos and stuff. It's just my way of being able to help people without having to mess with the nonsense that one can find in social media. Right? So anyway, I forget where I was going with this. <laughs> oh, it's okay to do what works for you. But don't be afraid to be open-minded and try something new but at the same time don't throw away all your old stuff that was working for you previously don't throw that stuff away right don't do that just slowly incorporate new methods of doing stuff a a two dollar journal from dollar general some of the post-it flags or the post-it notes and colored pens Work your way up to the big stuff. Um, or you can just go straight to a board of insanity, right? Have you have you ever heard of doing storyboards with scrapbooking? No. I have not. But if that works for some, that wouldn't work for me. That just that just would not work for me personally. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I just know myself, I would get so, so distracted with making the scrapbooking all pretty and everything. And I would forget to write the book because that's how this brain thinks. Uh, dry erase marker to write notes on the shower walls. There you go. There you go. My husband would freak though. Um, yeah, Angela, I, you know, it's just, it's just nuts. Um, Holly Mistletoe, do you plot more or less now than when you started writing? I plot a hell of a lot more now than when I did when I first started, started Holly. Um, I didn't know what plotting was. I didn't know. I didn't know what the hell I was doing when I first started. Honest to God, didn't have a freaking clue. I was just, and I kept saying, I'm just flying by the seat of my pants. You know, oh, you're a pantser. Whatever. Um, but I do plot more now. The only book that I really, and it was more research than it was plotting because, but those, I, I think research and plotting can go hand in hand. And it just, sometimes it just really needs to genre driven, genre specific. I write, remember Scottish historical romance. So, um, 
but the one book that I researched and plotted the hell out of, but researched the hell out of was the King's Courtesan, which is now known as the Edge of Forever. But I'm seriously considering going back to the King's Courtesan. But anyway, all my dry erase words were, I had like eight of them and it was all research, all research um, about King Charles of, uh, well, it wasn't called Italy back. Well, it was sort of Italy back then. But anyway, um, I plotted the hell out of that book. And I mean, I researched like a mad woman. And I had, I think, in, in addition to my, my dry erase boards, I also had a three ring binder that was just filled with things printed off from the internet because I knew because I was using real people, right? People who really lived, um, even though this was a fictional story, I had, I knew I had to make sure that I had the information about Charles and Italy at that time and politics and everything else. I knew that I had to have it. I just had to have it right. Um, let's see. Christina hero, heroine pictures, secondary characters, places, buildings. Um, I do actually, to a certain extent, I try to get my cover done before I even start writing my book. And then I usually print that off. It wasn't on that sheet on this black Richard's heart board. It was on another one because I had a couple, um, but I printed off a picture of the cover and I put it on the, uh, poster board. Right. So you can tell that I've used all sorts of different tips and, you know, tricks and, and I haven't been truly consistent with everything that I've done with my plotting. Right. And it's okay. So writing really good books, but I like to try new things and, and I want to improve my writing. And I think one of the best ways to improve your white writing is to be open-minded, um, and maybe try something new. A retractable dry erase board so I could put it away. You know what, Angie? Okay, I looked into this. <laughs> and I didn't purchase it. And I can't remember why I didn't. I forgot. But anyway, there was this. Okay, remember in high school, grade school, the, the roll down maps, right? You would... It's like a, a roller shade, okay? Like a great big roller shade. But they had maps on them or they, you know, they had the white one that was for the projector and all that that pulled down in front of the... Some of you young ones are not going to know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm sorry. But it just, it's like a roller shade, but a great big one. So there was this company. I don't know why I didn't do it. This is making me mad. Oh, I'm going to be on another mission when we're done. Anyway, it would do custom maps for you, right? So uh, they, they had one where it would hold three different things. So what I was going to do was to have my, my clan map, right? My maps of all my clans and where they were located. I wanted to one side to where um, it was my fictional clan map. And then the other side was, you know, where they really were, that map. And then I was going to have another one that was just the entire map of Scotland and, um, you know, England and Ireland and Italy and just, you know, that whole area on another one. And then the third one was going to be dry erase. Okay. So that I could just oh, stand on a chair and plot out the whole book on this dry erase sheet right? And then when I was done for the day or whatever, I could just roll it up. I have got to figure out why I didn't do that. You know what it probably was? I forgot that I wanted to. It slipped my mind. I have all sorts of things that slipped my mind. Um, Christina says she writes for 90 minutes every day, 11 to 1230 with a writing group. Perfect accountability. Um, yes. You, yes, consistency. How to become more consistent. Anybody? Yeah, just write every day. You know, it takes um, 30 days to get into the habit of something, right? Um, so just set daily goals. And it doesn't have to be every day of the week. 
week, right? You don't have to write every single day. Um, my recommendation, okay, back to my planner. Oops, one of my dreams got lost. Which one? Which one? Anyway, so one of my things in, is it this one? Is this one. Okay. You get your day planner or you just put it on your calendar, on your computer, right? And you write down everything, okay? Um, your kid's eighth grade graduation, mom's birthday, dad's birthday, anniversaries, all of that. That's the first thing you do. You don't make any plans to write or anything. You put in here everything, baseball games, football games, basketball games for your kids, whatever it is, um, work seminars, whatever. You put that into your day planner first, okay? Then you go back and you look at it and you think, okay, shoot, I can only write two days this week because, you know, Thursday I've got to take mom to the dentist. Friday, dad has a colonoscopy, whatever. Okay. Um, but you can see that you've got those days filled up already, or that morning is filled up or that afternoon is filled up. Okay. So then you can go through and you can pick those days that you know you can write. Okay. So let's say the month of August is just really extremely busy for you. Back to school shopping, getting the kids ready for school, whatever. That's okay. Write everything down. Who's got to be where and when. I mean, you're already doing that, right? Most of you are. Okay. So then go back and look and see, okay, I can write every day this week, but I can only write day two days next week. You're planning and plotting out your writing time. Okay. And that is to me, is consistency, okay? When you plan ahead and you know, okay, I'm not going to be able to do anything on, you know, this date, this date, this date, the rest of my time is open, or my God, the month of December is just crazy. I've got two days the entire month that I can write. Well, make those two days count, okay? If you are blessed enough that your children are older and, and not living with you anymore, um, and you have a lot more free time, that's fabulous. Okay. But just because you can't write every single day, like author C can write every single day, doesn't mean what you're doing is any less important or special or that you're doing it wrong. Right. Quit comparing yourself to other people. If you can consistently write every Wednesday from two to six, then consistently write every Wednesday from two to six. That's okay. And if you can set out time every single day, um, leave time for self-care, time with family, time with your, your spouse, your girlfriend, your whatever. Um, leave time for non-writing events. Okay. Take yourself out to lunch. You can do that. Uh, Carolyn said there's a planner made specially for writers called my Brilliant Writing Planner. It has this all set up and color coded for you. Oh, cool. Cool. I just went the cheap, you know, $10 off Amazon way. But hey, if it works for you, go for it, sister. And sitting with a, a, a with this, if you can write, have a set routine, that is, is ideal. That is just bliss. Um, if you can do that, if you can consistently, you know, set aside time every single day for your writing, that is fabulous. But if it all goes back to the different methods of writing, and I'm going to have Allie Pleiter on one night to talk about the chunky method of writing, and she just it so much better than I do. And I realize we've gotten entirely off the topic of plotting. There you go. If you can't write, if, if research, right? Right. Or the other author that cranks out eight books a year and tells you, you need to step up your game, shut that down immediately. You just, you have permission to tell them, fight me. I don't put out eight books in a year anymore. I used to, but they weren't all great big books. If you can't write eight books, if you can write eight books and eight, write and, and edit and publish and whatever, eight books in a year, 
I am very happy for you. I think that's awesome. If you can only put out two books a year, I'm happy for you. I think that's great. But for the love of God, don't tell the other author that they're doing it wrong or that they're writing too much or they're not writing enough. It's none of your damn business. Okay? It's none ya. None ya. I'm dating myself. Yes, research is writing. Do you have any more questions? Consistency of when my brain is working, really. I do well when sticking with the set routine whenever possible. <coughs> oh, it says one of my streams is having issues connecting. Please stand by while they reconnect. I don't know which one is down. Anyway, you have to find out what works for you and don't be afraid to try new stuff. Okay. Um, outlining, plotting, uh, knowing who your characters are. I think that's all, that all goes together in my mind. Um, so that's why I've been talking about these different subjects for the last several weeks. Like who in the hell does your hero think he is? Blah, 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 blah. This to me is all plotting and planning. They all go hand in hand together. Research, character development, knowing who your character is, scenes, where you're going to set your scene. All of that is plotting. Okay. Even if you consider yourself a panster, you're still plotting to a certain extent. You still know, I hope, who your characters are, what this book is about, and where you want to take it. <laughs> Molly says, I only tell authors they write too much when I can't keep up with my reading. <laughs> oh, and I've got other write, other readers, Holly, who say um, that some of us are just too damn slow. Well, I'm sorry. I have a life. I've got grandkids. I've got kids. I got stuff going on. I got stuff to do. So what was it like producing eight books per year? What was you, what was your schedule like and was coming up with new ideas easier or difficult? Okay. Ashley Doris. Um, I don't know if it was eight, but I know it was a lot. It could have been only six or seven, but several of those were little novellas that, um, some went into an anthology. Um, and the rest of them were really big books. And I was younger then. I had a hell of a lot more energy then. Um, I had a neck and collagen. I had youth on my side. Youth and ignorance. Um, but I won't say it was chaotic because I still had time set aside for the family. Okay? I mean, all I have to do here all day long is, is write. That's all I really have to do. Um, or so everybody thinks that that's all I have to do. I have a lot of other stuff to, that I need to get done, right? I've got grandchildren. I've got four kids. I've got my dad. He's 79. I want to spend as much time with them as I can. Um, but I have a feeling he's going to outlive all of us um, just because he's an old fart and I love him. Uh, and she says, sometimes I stop and go for a golf, golf cart ride, then go back to life. I clear my head for some reason. I love to drive. I do the same thing, right? Um, but anyway, <laughs> we all have life and life sometimes just gets in the way of writing and that's okay. Do not beat yourself up. But if you want to be successful at this, you do have to write more than one book a year. You just really do. I th For me, just me personally, three books in a year, that's one every quarter, is is great for everything I have going on in my life. Um, for all the traveling that Kevin and I want to do and that we do do, um, four books a year, three books a year. What is it? Four books, one every quarter. That's totally doable. It might not happen, but that's okay. I don't have, this is my day. This is my job. Oh, thank you, Christina for reminding everybody to hit the thumbs up button. Thank you. I appreciate that. Hit subscribe and share. Um, I guess my whole point is everybody's got a different system. Everybody's got a different way of doing things and that's okay. That's fine. You're not doing it wrong. You're not doing it better than anybody else has in, you know, what do they say? There's no such thing as a new idea. I beg to differ. 
Um, but quit beating yourself up. Yes, I will never be successful unless I can write a book less than 500 pages. <laughs> oh, Carolyn, I love you. <laughs> You're successful. You write beautifully. Emily absolutely loves every word of every page of every book that you write. You are, she talks about you all the time, honey. And she just loves, loves, loves your books. Anyway, so you're not alone. We're all in this together. Everybody's got a different opinion. Everybody's got a different way of doing things. Um, what works for one author, and this is across the board. This is for marketing. This is for everything. What works for one author isn't necessarily going to work for another. Right? That's okay, Carolyn. Hey, one book is better than none. Right? Remember, every word counts. <sighs> so anyway, I hope some of these little tips and tricks help you guys. Um, don't be afraid to get some post-it notes and color code things. Um, I'm, I love to see things. If it's right in front of me, I'm not going to forget it. Right? Um, usually, <laughs> I could look at something a thousand times ago. When did I get that? <laughs> <coughs> mm. The allergies from being outside all day. Yep, 30 plus years. So I guess it is what it is. You are perfect just the way you are, Carolyn. Don't let anybody ever tell you anything different. No. Siri, I do not want to stand right now. I don't care that it's time to stand. Leave me the hell alone. I'll stand when I'm damn good and ready. <laughs> so if you guys want to do a deeper dive into plotting, instead of just talking in generalities, we can do that some night. Just let me know. Um, I can show you exact processes and how I do things. Um, but again, it's different. I think it's different for each book. Because some books you I've had rattling around in my head for five years, and I know it front frontwards and forwards and backwards and sideways and upside down, that I don't necessarily have to plot a whole lot. And then their other book might be a surprise for people that I do want to plot the hell out of. And there's some that I just need to do a little plotting. So it's okay. A deeper dive would be great. Okay. So talking about um, my different... Yeah, we can do that. We will do the Board of Insanity because I think that's the easiest one for people to follow along with. And the Board of Insanity can be transferred into your day planners or into your journals or into your rocket book. It's those processes work. You don't have to just use it on a... Um... Oh, breaking my book into parts. Oh, we can definitely do that. I was thinking about that yesterday. Um, beginning, middle, end. Sure, we can do that. Not tonight, um, because I'll need to do a little prep for that. Um, okay, deeper dive into plotting. Oh, can't use that pen. You can see all my wrinkles. Okay, deeper into plotting. Okay, beginning, middle, and end. It is not beginning. It is beginning. That was very helpful. Didn't realize I was plotting. See, we're plotting all along and you didn't know it. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. I used to do the binders, too. Yep. Yeah. But I ran out of room. And this is a big-ass office. I got bookshelves everywhere. And I was really starting to run out of room. So I knew... I don't want to put stuff in the basement where I know out of sight, out of mind, you're going to forget. At least I would forget. So I knew I had to come up with better ways of doing things. Um, beginning, middle, and end. I'm so glad to see you all here tonight. Oh, good, Carolyn. I'm glad. Oh, thank you, Shannon. We'll talk tomorrow. Well, no, I'm, here's what I'm, here's my plan for the next, um, until next Wednesday, uh, I'm going to put my phone and everything on Do Not Disturb. I'm, I'm, what is that thing, Shannon, that you can put on your computer? 
to like disconnect your internet temporarily from your, from that thing. What is it called? Anyway, I'm shutting everything off, shutting everything down except the laptop. And I'm just going to write from here until next Wednesday. Yes, Shannon, I will make time for you, honey, because this is important. Um, but I just, I have to, I have to shut everything off. I'm going to give airplane mode. Well, there, I thought there was a thing, Angie, that you could like a program. Airplane mode works too. I could do that. Duh, the, um, focus. Thank you, Shannon. Focus. Uh, okay. How many, I get the big thick core boards, cork boards. Is it cork boards? I found them at Dollar Tree last week. I used to get at Hobby Lobby for a lot more. Cork boards. I like that idea. Shut up, Shannon. I'm trying to focus, damn it. Cork boards. Great big cork boards. And then just pin my post-its to it. And then I don't have to store poster board. I have one cork board for everything. Thank you, Christina. You get a virtual hug from me for that idea. I love that idea. Oh, Lord, don't give her more ideas. I know I have so many. Anybody else ever think or just wish? I wish I could get a gig stick and just insert it into my brain and download all these freaking book ideas I have. No, no, Susan, you don't need more cork boards. I know I made a couple of my own. But um, they were heavy. And I love going to the everything's it's to the Dollar Tree. I, I know it's a dollar twenty-five now. I can live with that. That's some inflation I can live with. Um, anyway, it is almost eight o'clock. Core boards. What is a core board, Christina? Is that like that, uh, like spongy? Oh, and that was a Dollar Tree, hmm? Well, maybe I'll do that tomorrow. Nope, I got it right. I'll look at core boards later. Yes, like styrofoam or something. Yeah, I know what you're talking about now. Those are really cool. But I never thought about using those for plotting. Yeah, okay, cool beans. Anyway, it's 8 o'clock. I'm going to sign off because, as always, I haven't eaten yet. Um, I ate earlier, but I'm starting to get the, the, I'm starting to get, thank you, Christina. Shannon, you take all the fun out of everything. <laughs> anyway, I love you all. Um, thank you all so much for being here. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and share and turn on your notifications so that you never miss a episode. Um, and we will be back on, I think we're going to do a Friday night live this Friday night. We might not. It depends on how the writing is going because I am on a severe deadline. Um, Friday night tends to be uh, freestyle in it. <laughs> we talk about everything. But I think what's really important right now is that we, yeah, I hope to see you all on Friday. Please don't hate me if I can't do a Friday night live. Okay. Just don't hate me. Um, might do it from a different location. Who knows? But um, yeah, but we will definitely be here every Wednesday. I have made that commitment to you every Wednesday night, seven o'clock central. I will be here to talk to you all about all things writing. And remember, we're all in this together. You all are just awesome. And uh, we will see you definitely next Wednesday.